Hey, what's going on, everybody? It's your boy, Scarfinger, and this is Scarcasm Live. I am currently using my new PC, so if there's any problems with this recording, we're going to blame it on the PC. Is this the PC that you were eyeing that your girlfriend said, nah? No, she told me that I should probably wait, and if she was right. I waited. I waited a, basically a week. Um, I, I wait. Basically, I waited till I got paid again. <laughs> I had the money. I had the money, but then um, I, I I wanted to wait till I had more money so that buying this computer wouldn't take all of my money. Right. So yeah, that's what that's what happened. I really wanted a better one. Um, you know when uh, oh I was watching the game awards. And um, they were talking about those Omen PCs, the HP Omen PCs. Uh-huh. I almost got one of those. Uh, it, but it was the, the Omen PCs were like 800, I think. Right. And I, I almost got one. This this PC didn't cost me. Um, this was this was 500, I think. So basically the price of the Xbox. Yes, but I needed I needed this for a lot more than just playing games. And to be right. honest, like I I spend most of my time playing RimWorld, so I don't really need like you know super gaming PC thing. But the way the way that I get paid now, shit, I might <laughs> like you know I might be able to do that like in the middle of next year if if everything goes well. Um, Especially after February, because February my contract gets uh, renewed, and I could possibly be making more money if I start hitting my goals better. Um, but this is a very, very hard time in in storage to hit your goals um, because it happens. And this is the third storage company I work for, and it happens every year. No one pays their bills for uh, around Thanksgiving and Christmas because they all think they all are you know trying to put their money towards the holidays, and then they all try to catch it up. Uh, they all try to catch it up with their taxes, and mm-hmm. then, and like the a lot of people miss it. So like your auction in January and February is always massive. So uh-huh. yeah. That's 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 gonna happen. It's happened everywhere. Uh, it, you know, it's not gonna. It, it it won't be any different here. But yeah. So um, I last last week I took two days off in the middle of the week because I wasn't feeling very well. And okay. That me that meant that I had to work a Saturday, and I haven't had to work Saturdays since I got this job. And I had to oh fuck, I had to work all day Friday. And that was the absolute fucking worst, like working all day Friday because I haven't had to work all day Friday and I haven't had to work a Saturday since I've since I've moved to this job. But I mean, you were like, I I thought I was above this shit. Exactly. (laughs) Exactly. Well, actually, I got hustled. I got hustled a little bit. I wasn't feeling good. And my assistant took it upon herself and be like, well, look, I can come in and work tomorrow. If, if you if you take Saturday, like take another day, get yourself straight. But like, really, she just wanted a fucking Saturday off. Uh-huh. But uh-huh. I mean, I don't I don't I don't mind like doing that, like helping her out with some shit like that. But I'm not about the Saturday life because then the snow came on the snow came in on Friday and uh-huh. like she left early. Uh, and I had to finish the rest of the day in the fucking snow. And then um, Saturday, it was still fucking snowing. Like, it didn't stop snowing until around the time I got out of work on Saturday. But here, it wasn't <clears throat> It wasn't so bad because it was more of a snow-rain mix. So a lot of the snow wasn't sticking until night. Right. That's kind of how it was here. I mean, I left early from work on Friday. Not too much early. It, but it, it was... Um, I. I just wanted to make sure I didn't want to get stuck there just in case but it, it won't no thing. You know what I mean? Right. I understand. But I mean, I'm pretty good at dri- snow driving, but ice driving that, that, that ain't happening. I'm from, <laughs> I'm from Virginia. We, we are bad drivers in general. Uh huh. And, uh, like, like Virginians have a hard time. Well, I mean, well, people talk about bad Virginia drivers, but I mean, Almost everywhere that I've been, if it's a big city, it's a fucking problem with the traffic. So take that shit with a grain of salt. Um, but and it also, you know, it was kind of like they, somebody did some research and they said the northern Virginia traffic, the 95 in uh, like when you get closer to D.C. is like the worst traffic in the in the in the country. Um mm-hmm. 
but uh because 95 is always backed up it's the worst uh, that's the reason why last time when i got Pooh bear i just paid my ex to uh pick up Pooh bear i mean to drop Pooh bear off and to come back and pick her up i just paid her to do it right i just said fuck it you can you can have the money i'll pay you whatever you want just you do all this shit yourself um <laughs> um and i'm pretty i'm pretty much gonna do that again right after christmas um so, but yeah, so, but like we, Virginians have a hard time driving in the rain. Mm-hmm. So snow is the absolute worst here. Luckily, I kind of have a hard time driving in the rain at night. Not that I really have a hard time with it. It's just, I would prefer not to because it's people still like, don't give a shit about anybody and they'll like use their brights. And then already, you know, when the road is wet, it's like, it's just black. Like there's, you can't, you can't see the lines, like your lights. It just seems like it just like, <laughs> Bruh. they're not even working. You know what t- I mean? I'm it just like bleeds right the, into it. I'm going to tell you what's the absolute worst when it comes to that. I drove in the rain up North through New York city at night in the rain. It was pouring. I couldn't see any fucking lines. I was like, it, it wasn't a whole lot of people on the road at that point, but I couldn't see a fucking thing. I was just guessing where the lines might be. Right. And that was the worst. That was the worst driving experience of my life. Luckily, there just wasn't a whole lot of people on the road. But I drove. I drove up to Massachusetts to uh, to 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 go well, going to my in laws' house, and then I was going to PAX. Right. I was about to ask if that was for PAX. Yes. Um, it was a little bit of both because you know her her people are from up there, so. We, we, so it was kind of, it was kind of both. Like we go do the pack. We, you know, we go there, visit, go leave, go to do the pack thing and then come back. You know, that's yeah, I wouldn't thing. mind going to a pack, but not really for the, not really for the convention as much as like, there's a lot of our podcast community that ends up up there, especially the people that are on the East coast. So that'd be kind of cool. You know, it's always kind of cool, you know, yeah. Me every- Everybody wants me. Everybody, I've been asked by a few different people about going to Magfest. Um, but the problem with Magfest is it's like right after the first of the year. Mm-hmm. So like everything that you have to do for yourself and for your family for Christmas, and then now I gotta fucking take a trip to basically DC, you know, National Harbor, Maryland, and you know, go to a damn convention. Yeah, that's what you were telling me about, because I was asking you about that. Uh, there's a gaming convention here in Raleigh at, after the first of the year in, like, February, and you're like, well, that's kind of the same time as MAGFest. Yeah, MAGFest kind of moves around a little bit. Sometimes it's right after the first of the year. Um, one time it was in February. I don't fucking know. Like, it's just kind of all over the place. I would, I mean, the only problem with February is, like, it's... Right, is it's it's far a little bit past Christmas, so you can try to recoup a little bit of money. But also, my daughter's birthday is the twenty eighth, which is right. two, which is two weeks after fucking Valentine's Day. <laughs> yeah, mine's a six, so it's like like a week before Valentine's Day. <laughs> yeah, so it's so it's just kind of weird. I would like to go to Magfest, but I don't know if I'm gonna be able to make it. Cause um, cause I didn't I didn't really know the dates, but it's the fourth through the seventh. Mm-hmm. I don't really know about all that. Like it's that's it's a little too close. I, like I really wish they would push it a little bit after the first of the year. Like come what, on, man. Like, what kind of just, convention is Magfest? It's a music music and gaming festival. So they it's like um it's like a typical game game festival except for they have like areas where there's just like a bunch of shit you can play like there's a big fucking room and like it has like a bunch of consoles and shit there's a there's a uh a area for uh dweebs like you so you could you could play card games like magic the gathering and all of that kind of shit it's like a, a section for that and and then there's there's areas where you you can go to panels and such and you can also um go to like concerts they have like these little concerts and people are like doing like chip tunes and shit like that i went to mm-hmm. see I, I did, the only one that i really like went to see that i actually enjoyed was i mean i went to see what's his name mega ran oh yeah yeah i dig that dude 
Yeah, because he's I, the the. Have you ever seen the video of the 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 one where he proposed to his girlfriend? Uh uh-uh. uh there, There's a video of him. Um, you know he he was performing and he proposed to his girlfriend. I was mm-hmm. to, I was totally there. I was right there by the stage. Because I normally don't really get into like the nerd music and stuff. Like, but he seems like a little bit above that to where it's like he's a nerd, but it's sort of. It's not so on the nose. Like some of these dudes, they literally like this is a this is an over Overwatch rap. This is a you, you know you know what I mean. That's just so. No, they have they have a little bit of everything. It's just kind yeah. of crazy. It's a um, it's a um, it's a they have like all kinds of stuff like metal bands that play like metal versions of like video game music and all kinds of stuff. Like there, I'm I'm I can I can guarantee you there's been. There's 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 something there's something for you there also. Yeah. <clears throat> but it's just it's too it's too close to everything. Like it's way too close. Yeah, I'm probably gonna go to Supercon again next year because Supercon was pretty cool. Like I never really got into the whole comic thing. I mean, I like. I mean, I'm more of a graphic novel guy, and I do like comics that are kind of original, like original stories and stuff, rather than your your typical Marvel DC type type stuff. You, you know what I mean? Yes. It's just like, but that that's the one that's in the middle of the summer, right? Right. So okay. it's kind of far away from everything. Only thing about about it is if, which you don't have a problem with this, but if you were like a major cosplay person, <laughs> if you were dressed up as Darth Vader, you are going to be hot. <laughs> you know what I mean? The middle of July. <laughs> yeah. I, you know what? I liked, I, I, I really like um, taking pictures of cosplayers. That's cool. I, yeah. I really enjoy that, and I'm unlike unlike my girlfriend, who is the actual fucking photographer out of the two of us. She had like she's scared to like talk to people and stuff. Like, I'm like, no, I'm scared. I'm I'm not scared at all to get in there and be like, hey, you want to post with something? You know, that's what that's a, that's what they want. You know, yeah, absolutely. I mean, the- what they have, but at Magfest they have an area for the cosplayers. They kind of just hang out so people can take pictures with them and of them. Mm-hmm. So th- there's a little there's a little area in the in the hotel type deal. Because the first Comic Con I went to was the normal NC Comic Con, and that one's all right. But it's um it for when it's in Durham and Durham traffic is just killer. I I just hate the road how how they got the roads designed. But the Borussia I went to was in Durham, but someone else drove, and I really like that venue. It just sucks it has to be in Durham because I just. I just can't stand driving up there, but but yeah, that they, they have some cosplayers that like some Borderlands cosplayers and people that do that shit right for the Borderlands, where they do the cell shading and everything is like impressive. <laughs> yeah, that's fucking dope. That's cool. Yeah, I'm I'm just kind of I I'm I would love to be able to go to all of this shit, but it's just a it's just a matter of like having the time and the money to do it. Like right, because that's my problem. It's like. I have to pay to get into this thing, then everything into this thing costs money. <laughs> you know what I mean? My first yeah. Comic Con, I was like, "Where's the free stuff?" <laughs> you know what I mean? <laughs> nope, ain't none free. I mean, but, but yeah, yeah, it's still I, cool. To hang out yeah, with yeah, but but the, the the cool, like I said, the cool thing about Magfest is like that game room is open like twenty four seven. Mm-hmm. So like you can as long as you got your badge, you can go in there and you can play whatever you want to. They have all kinds of consoles, even going all the way back consoles. They usually have this big uh this big like rock band setup. So you can go get your rock band on and the, the you know, last time I went they had a bunch of like like a they had like a like a karaoke book that you could just look through to figure out what song because they had like two thousand songs through customs and shit. Mm-hmm. Um it was I mean it was just all kinds of stuff and it was I mean it was really fucking awesome. Like one of the most awesome things ever that I that I ever experienced was like a trillion I mean it felt like a trillion white people belting cult of personality at the top of their lungs in that rock what band area. Huh? What is cult of personality? You've never heard of cult of personality by Living Color? Oh. No, you haven't. I mean, I've heard Living Color, but I mean, when it comes to like more popular music, other than, you know, your sound gardens, Jay-Z, you, you know, things that everybody knows right. is, you know, I, you know, like you said, like, like the whole thing about um, what was it? Uh, 
like the journey song and stuff. Yeah. Yeah. I kind of know a little bit, but it, you know, maybe I'm just not that type of white person. Like I don't really know the lyrics to freaking. <laughs> well, you, well, you need to be a better white person than shit. <laughs> but, to, um, you, yeah. You, you need to, you need to be a better white person. Fuck that shit. And I was more of a Boston a, fan than a journey fan. And we have the show because, title, a better white person. <laughs> That's how you wreck your time, ain't it? <laughs> yeah, I think so. Um, well, unless unless something else comes up in between now and then, uh, yeah, I, I'm trying to make sure I got it because sometimes I forget what the title was supposed to be, and then I go to edit the show and I'm go fuck. <laughs> like, oh, it'd be funny it. if one of the show titles is now. That's the show title. <laughs> well, see, here's the thing. There's I did the um I did the Dream Team yesterday, and here's the thing about the Dream Team. They hate when I call out the show title during the show. Uh huh. They can't stand it. So, like, whenever if I say that, if I say, "Oh, that's the show title," they go, "Fuck! Why'd you have to do that?" Like every single time, and it's a, like a big, uh-huh. fu- it's like a big fucking deal. Um, so that's that's it's always fun to do, but I like doing it here too. But no one's gonna be mad at me for doing it. <laughs> right. Uh-huh. Right. Um. Speaking of that, like I really, I really need to start convincing more people that they should go to the dream. They they should go listen to the Dream Team. Dream Team is fucking dope. I mean, there are so many people listen to Facetious, but um, mm-hmm. but like there there are some people that that um that don't listen to to either of the other shows. They just listen to this one. But I'm like, why would you just listen to this one? There's so much awesomeness in like me on all of this stuff. So why why won't you just well, this, do it? Well, this one has me and you. Well, so true. And facetious, you know, it's got blue and blue's cool and all, but, but you know, not, I, I bring me. a little bit of the awkward social awkwardness to the show. So oh, oh, speaking of speaking of um, listening to shows, um, our numbers for November probably because we were a little bit more consistent. Our numbers for November were a hundred higher than October. Oh, nice. A hundred and two to be exact. I need a soundboard so we can be like, yay. (laughs) Technically, I think I could pull that off. It's a little weird trying to work that out with voice meter, but I think there's a way I can do that. Right. I'll try try to do it the other way. My favorite soundboard stuff is when people um, get clips from the shows and they'll like actually take it out to where it, and it ends up being a running joke on how in gamers in beta one time he was like one of them was like i was doing my buddy's um podcast or whatnot and they just cut it out to where when he's not on the show they were like hey hey what you doing man he's like i was doing my buddy and it just stops at that (laughs) it's just that's that's a thing for um starting point does that too uh, cause you know, we have both of those gentlemen on facetious. Um, and I, I, st- after, after, um, after we had, um, one of them on, I started listening to the show and then we had the second one on and I'm like, Hey, I just listened to the show. Um, I can't, I, I, I keep thinking, I know it's Corey. I know Corey is the second person that we had on, but I keep, I'm, I'm blanking on the first person's Brian. Brian, there we go, Brian. But I like their show, um, even though um, uh, Corey cares way too much about shit I don't care about, like fucking Overwatch. Like I don't fucking care about Overwatch at all. Like I just like there's 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 next to nothing that is going to make me give a shit about Overwatch ever. Right. So and, and he really cares about that. Like he actually does a separate show. Uh, 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 you would like, probably you would probably like it if they did more of the co-op stuff, which yes. actually I would like it more if they did more of the co because when they do the co-op stuff, it's really fun. And like I'm like, I know that um the Halloween stuff, yeah, it's Halloween, but you can that Omnic thing that they did when when you were watching me play, mm-hmm. that's just lore of the game. Like that could be just something that's always in the game. You know what I mean? Right. Or at least just always have some sort of rotating co-op thing because some people would like to buy the game if it you know wasn't just um competitive multiplayer which you know me, neither me or you are really that into that anymore right um but we did actually play some games together well we played a game together which is the game that's been our game for you know since september 
but um, right. I mean, other than the fact that you, you know, I bought uh, the division to play with you, and then you didn't play the division. I did. No, and we still can. No, but you didn't. You know, it's mostly just space on my hard drive. You know, it's I need to get me an external. Me too. I really do. I um I did, however, play the division with Mike J, the homie Mike J. Um, we we played and neither one of us had played in a while, so we was just trying to figure all that shit out. And he just kept running, uh, kept running, trying to get to the goal. But of course, you're running on the streets. Eventually, people are going to show up, and then they do, they would just kill us, and then we would start over. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, the vision ain't no joke. You you can't run, really run and gun in the division. It's but but it's cool like that, you know. I mean, I, I really dig it, even though I haven't really played it that much. I mean, it it's unfair that it gets compared to Destiny, even though I don't think it's a bad thing to get compared to Destiny. I think it is because I like Destiny at this, especially at this point, because people are fucking pissed with Destiny right now. Well, people are pissed at everything, and it's to me, it's True. over small stuff. Well, I mean, it's well, not no. Small, I, I would but, I would say the people who were pissed off about the bright engrams, like that part to me is small because bright engrams are cosmetic shit and it doesn't really fucking matter. Like if if guns were locked behind that progression system, then I would have an issue. Um, but and but right because when they were when they were talking about how well, well this dude got to stop watch and figure it out that you know XP is throttled if you're grinding out public events, I'm like for one. Why the hell are you doing that shit? What? Why? Who the fuck has that kind of, of like time freaking that no life dude that has time to do that shit? And and secondly, I've been playing since launch, and if they're throttling it, it hasn't affected me at all. Like like I haven't noticed it. I haven't. You know what I mean? Yeah. But I, I, I mean, I, it it just it just sucks. But the the whole thing about like you know, DLC comes out and things I could do yesterday, I can't do today. That's the part that would bother me. If I cared about such things, like I've never, I still have never done a nightfall and I'm, and I have never finished a raid of any kind. So it doesn't bother me too much. But if I was the type of person that cared about that kind of stuff, yes, I would be totally fucking pissed. Well, you can still do the nightfall and the raid. I believe you just can't do it on the prestige level. Yeah. But that's, that's fucking bullshit. Right, but you have to be the level, you know what I mean? So they're not going to keep it, keep the prestige level like a low level if everyone is now, you know, in the 330s or something and it's still like recommended at light level is 280, you know, to keep it like hard because it's supposed to be hard. But but I, I see what you mean. Like the heroic strikes are, I mean, but that happened in the last game too, you know what I mean? Some yeah, things but, are going to be just, locked out. But, but the, the I, it, people have made the, the, is people say it like okay with destiny one like we didn't know what to expect so and 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 we didn't know what we should and should not accept so we accepted everything but the problem is like we accepted it before so they expect they expect us to accept it again and we shouldn't have accepted it from the beginning right well i mean the dlc come out it's i mean you can play most of the game the the main thing that you can't play is anything that's like going to be um, ranked out of what you can rank up to, and anything that's actually actually part of the DLC, like the story and stuff. I mean, of course, you're not going to be able to play the DLC missions without the DLC. But mo- like most of the stuff that we would do, like your milestones and all that stuff to like get you your loot, you can still do, and you're able to get and all the new guns you can still get. Like you got the is it Prometheus lens is what it's called? No, it, it's something lens, but, um, you know, that's a new gun that's, that came out with the DLC. So any sort of loot you'll still be able to get. Yeah. It, it just, it just sucks. And I'm, I didn't, I really did not plan on, um, I really did not plan on, um, jumping on the DLC, but mm-hmm. I'm looking at it like, I know that I'm probably going to be left out if I don't. And it's not even like I'm really like, to be honest, like I, I really is. It's not even like I'm really playing that a lot because I've been playing a lot of rim world. Mm-hmm. Um, so, but like just the fact that I feel like I'm going to get left out, but I, I want to still be able to play the game with people like you 
and eventually I want to get it for Xbox um, so I can play play the game with my friends over there. So it's just one of those things where I'm just kind of like, I don't really want to pay for this, but I, I, I know I'm probably going to anyway, so I might as well just fucking buy it. Yeah, I think it, it feels weird because it's a multiplayer game that feels like a single player game since it's mostly PvE other than Crucible. And then, but you would still get left out on Call of Duty if you didn't get the maps because some people will be able to play the maps and and if they're playing with you, they'll be playing on the maps that they don't want to play anymore because they played them so much. You, you know what I mean? Yeah, but I'm, but I'm not locked out. Call but Duty. I'm not locked out from prestiging. I just can't play on those maps. Right. Like they didn't, they didn't take they didn't take away a, a core aspect to, of the game and stuck it behind the paywall. And and of what I understand, as from what I understand, every I have not heard anybody say that they were satisfied by the 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 Curse of Osiris or whatever it's called content. Right. I have not heard one person say that they were satisfied with that. They some someone I was listening to a show. Um, uh, a show called Ad Space on the Unreasonable Fridays feed, um, and he said that literally he finished all of the content in like two hours. Right, I, I haven't finished it yet. I'm not sure how long I got, but um, and he said, and he said that two hours was him, um, you know, like taking time out and editing shows and stuff like that in between. Huh. Yeah. Well, I don't know. It was worth it for me because, you know, I still like playing the game and, you know, I didn't mind chucking down a little bit of extra change just to keep playing because whatever. <laughs> but on that note, you know, playing with people since when we play Destiny, unless we're getting up with, with Los or, you know, Husky or something like that, like we did, maybe we should have another Killing Floor night because those were like always pretty big. Yes, I keep trying to tell my Xbox people that they need to buy Killing Floor. Xbox needs to fucking give Killing Floor away for free. Like they need to fucking do that because Killing Floor is fucking fun. Because we were um we were having a conversation in the chat um um which you are now a part of. So now when I have these conversations, like you're not on the outside looking in. Um, we we're having a conversation about like um about like multiplayer games and stuff like that, and I'm just in I'm just like bruh. Killing Floor. Like, cause I really want to play, like, I own some, st- I own, like, Payday 2 and stuff like that. I even own Payday 2 on PC. Um, but, like, no one is around to fucking play the game with me. So I'm just kind of like, well, why the fuck do I own this? Oh, cause I got it in a humble bundle. Okay, dude. Um, like, those are conversations that I have with myself. And yes, I do answer myself. No, I'm not fucking crazy. Um, but, like, there's, there's, there's so many multiplayer games that I would love to be able to play with play the game play the games with people because i didn't want to pause right there saying that i wanted to play with people um especially in this climate right that we're in right now um um, and uh but I'd, i'd love to play these games with other people but like people don't seem to really want to get together on much very much uh in these days except for if it's on like destiny Mm-hmm. I mean, like, and then, like, I, there's games that I haven't even started that I would like to play, like Titanfall 2, but, like, the, the, this is, this is the problem with having friends on both consoles and having both consoles, because you have to, tr- every, every game that you want to play, you either have to resign yourself to say fuck it and buy it on both consoles, the division, because I ended up buying the DLC on the division. It was on sale, but I bought the DLC on the division so that I can actually play the game with Mike J. Uh huh. And I'm probably going to buy the division again for PC on the 17th because on the seven uh, on the 17th, uh, the division on PC, the gold edition is going to be twenty seven dollars, so that I can play with my play with my friends on PC. Because now I have a better PC, I kind of want to play some PC games, but I want to play something other than fucking RimWorld. You know, RimWorld sounds like a website that it's like a porn site that um like specializes in like rim. Like um, rim jobs and stuff. I'm I'm pretty sure that um, joke has been ran through by Rashani every time I mention Rimworld on the Dream Team, which you should be listening to. Um, so I'm not original, right? That's exactly what I wanted to hear. Yeah, every time I say every time I say that I, that I like playing Rimworld or I like watching people play Rimworld, he always says rim jobs. Um, <laughs> so yeah, um, I I mean. I really, I really, really enjoy that game. 
this is, world, this is, this is, this world, is, party this is, time, excellent. <laughs> and you did that with, in, you know, in a butthole. <laughs> <laughs> oh. <laughs> um, <laughs> all yeah, so fucking jerk. <laughs> I really, I really would like to get to the point to, of streaming some RimWorld. I was going to try to do that on Sunday, but since I worked on Saturday and it was just a slog, I was just tired and I never actually got around to it. I've been tired as hell. Um, just because like those two days in the middle of the week were great to try to rest for that, but then I had to work the rest of the week and it just did like I not, not feeling good. I was having, I was having problems having headaches. Turned out it, it ended up being a sinus thing. Um, but, um, it's cool we didn't record because we we're going to record Thursday, but then some craziness, which I'll get into later. But the um, so you actually weren't feeling good, so <clears throat> no. So, no, but, I well, what do you think of these days to where we're like kind of the makeup? Because it seems like we're not really recording on Thursdays anymore. I'm but, um, I'm I'm pretty much cool with re- recording most days, but th- but see, here's the thing: I'm cool with doing this today. Because my girlfriend is out of town. I like having a specific recording day when she's in town so I can plan around her. Right. So yeah. Yeah. So that, that's the, that's the thing. Like I, it's easier to plan around her when I can say, okay, on Thursday, I got this at nine, you know, like that type of thing. Um, right. But no, I don't, I don't have no, I don't have no issues with recording on different days, especially when she's not around. Cool. But yeah. Um, we can get on the Thursday thing because, man, having some little problems with my son. The um, well, he's been having like some violent outbursts and stuff. And then finally, my mom was just like, "We have got to, you know, get him checked out at the at mental health or something." And so, and well, what happened is he was like hitting and kicking and biting and everything. And the the place that we were just doing for a school thing to where. He would go to this place for instead of going to school, he would go to this this day treatment place and he would get his schoolwork there so they could handle him better because we're we're having to go get him from school like every day. Like cause he just he, he freaking slapped the principal across the face. But um so <laughs> that's the thing. <laughs> the um but but yeah, and they gave me another he's like if you're having like some issues and Amber was out you know, at an appointment with Riley and then I, um, so I was there and so I called the number and they were, they, you know, they talked me through it and they said, well, you need to take them to the emergency room. And I, um, and I, after all that, I didn't want to drive. I was like a nervous wreck. And then, so I had my mom drive us and then we waited there from five to about nine, just waiting in the freaking room. And then him also acting up there. And then, um, Finally, the, the nurse come in and say, oh, yeah, you guys are discharged. You know, there's nothing wrong. And my mom, like, flipped out. Like, I've never seen my mom like that. Dude, she she went off on everybody and was like, somebody needs to do something. What we're dealing with and whatnot, there is something wrong and whatnot. She was, like, yelling at the nurses, and they were like, ma'am, you need to calm down. And me and we got escorted by the police out of the hospital. Wow. <laughs> and so... <laughs> That was the thing. Like, I was like, mom, I never thought that I would be escorted out of anywhere with my mother <laughs> by the police. But yeah, that, that, that lady, cause she was just like, you're the problem. And then all this stuff. And you know, at the, the like the nurse was like, told my mom that she was the problem. She's the reason that he's the way he is and all this stuff. And she wow. was, and, and then I was just like, um, let's just go. Let's go. Okay, let's go. <laughs> so, and, and then all of a sudden, the nurse was like, and why does he have marijuana in his bloodstream? And my mom looked at me, and she was like, what is he talking about, Chase? And I was like, the, the, this is the CBD. The, the, and then, I, then that made me mad because that, that stuff's not supposed to, like, show up any THC or anything because it's not got THC. Like, CBD is the, um, it's the... It's the not the THC part that's actually for, you know, people with autism and people with, but, and that was the first day we even tried it because someone was like, you should try this. You, you know what I mean? It's completely right. legal and stuff, you know, because that, um, 
I mean, cause we were at our wits end and whatnot. So we tried it and that was the best day at school that he had had in a while, even though he was only, he was only there for two hours. Cause that's only as long as they'll let him be there. And then all of a sudden they were, they, they said they found marijuana in his bloodstream. So they were like, this is a CPS issue. And we were like, so that night was absolutely crazy. But they're, they're okay. Wait, Amber. Wait, 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 let's back up a little bit. The, mm-hmm. the, okay. So you, you were referred to give him this stuff. Mm-hmm. And so this stuff, it wasn't like a prescription or anything. No, it's, it's like a, um, say it's like a vitamin, you know, you, you buy it like over the counter or whatnot. And, um, th- there's a certain company that we got it through that, um, is reputable, reputable pull, but, um, and, and whatnot. So, but it is, it is derived from cannabis. So that's, you, you, you know, thing, but it, um, but it's not a, like illegal, and it doesn't have THC. THC is the part that gets you high. So then, you know, we were like thinking that they were, that we were like drugging our kid, and we were just trying it. You know what I mean? And it's not if we thought that. I mean, we wouldn't sit here and give our kid weed. You know what I mean? Like we're freaking crazy. But um, why the fuck not? Maybe it'll calm <laughs> him down, and he'll just get the munchies. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> I could I could yeah. deal with the munchies. I don't want you wilding out in school, kid. Like Right. So yeah, um but they're right now at a thing with him which is Amber and then my dad, but my stepdad and um so he's normally pretty calm about things. So here's the difference in my mom and my stepdad. Like my my stepdad he gets his fishing uh hook Hook on, hooked on something or whatnot, and he's pissed off. You know what I mean? Something small like that. And then, but then it, when it comes to something big, he's super calm. But my mom would be super calm in the small situation, but just can't handle it in the big situation. You know what I mean? So they like kind of need each other there to like. <laughs> but that time, my mom was like going off. Oh my goodness! But um, but yeah, she was upset because. For one, if he came in there, he was like, okay, we're going to have to discharge, but this is why, you know, they, but he was like, oh, you're getting this car just walked out. And, and then how they treated so, like, so they never, like, so they never actually explained anything. They were just like, nope, you're good. Yeah. They, and, um, so that was like, it was hard to get to sleep that night. It was like, my adrenaline was like going, but, um, plus I was thinking that, are we going to like get our kids taken away? Cause it's freaking CBD, you know what I mean? And then, um. But then when we talked to other people, like when we talked to um, his agency that we're going through, they were like, yeah, it's totally fine. You know, it's, you know, we actually know the company you got through, I mean, and, and whatnot. But it's just how they acted was like completely uncalled for. You know what I mean? It's like when there's another word for a customer, they think they can treat them like crazy. You know what I mean? Like a tenant is a customer, but the landlords don't treat tenants like customers. A patient is a customer, but nurses and doctors don't always treat them like customers. You know what I mean? If yeah. if I went into McDonald's and was like going off on them about you know putting lettuce on my Big Mac or something that I didn't want, they they can't get in my face and be like, "Yo, ba ba ba, it's you're the reason the lettuce is on there in the first place." You, you know what I mean? Right. <laughs> you know? So yeah, my mom did overreact. I I can admit that, but you know, she was in an emotional state and you got, and you gotta have, you gotta have some sort of tact, some sort of bedside manner, like some sort of, okay, okay, here's what we're going to do here. Like that, that's what I do. Like I, 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 you know, I work in storage. So like I learned over the phone when I worked at call center jobs, the best thing you can do with an irate customer is to go as flat as humanly possible. Uh-huh. And just talk as flat as humanly possible. And it makes them realize that they're elevated and you're not. And either they come, either they calm down or they can't fucking deal with it and they just leave. Right. Yeah. Um, but you still gotta, you still gotta have, you still gotta be a fucking professional at your job, B. Right. It was, so, you know, I don't know if I've said it on the show before, but my son, he, he does have autism and, and, and I'm not like PC about it at all. I mean, autism fussing sucks. Like it really sucks. You know what I mean? It, it, like if when you say like parent, parenting is hard, like, parenting is easy as pie unless you have an autistic kid. It's it's really tough. And and sometimes you know the fight or, fight or flight. 
you know, some kids are flight, you know, if there's a situation, they're going to like retreat in the room and they you won't see them. You know what I mean? And I guess my kid is fight. <laughs> like if there's something he don't want to do, <sighs> you might as well get ready to fight. You know what I mean? And so we're, tr- I mean, we're trying to help him like, like our, earlier he had a episode and he would say like, I don't know why I did it. Like, I'm sorry I hit you, but I don't know why. We were like, why, why? And he'd be like, I don't know. I don't remember. Do, um, do you think that uh, part of this is Riley? Well, a little bit, but I mean, it's here's the thing. There's so many things that have changed this year. And he wanted a little baby brother anyway, you know what I mean? Okay. But um, the, um, okay, we, we, you know, we got robbed and they took things that he would care about. Xboxes, computers, and stuff. And we moved because of that. So we, even though he normally likes moving because he gets to a new place, but, you know, even though he expresses that he likes it, he, it could still affect him. And then they also did a medication change. And, um, because of something about Medicaid not paying for something. And we were like, okay. And then they were like, well, we'll just change it to this. It's basically the same thing. And I guess not. And so, and then he's also, almost 10 so i mean there can be hormonal things that he's you know he's getting into the double digits so so i don't know what to pinpoint it down to it's just yeah it's just the shit's happening and you just want it to stop yeah or at least come down some because i i mean i would love to do stuff with him you know but i don't think i've ever really had a conversation conversation with him like we've talked and stuff and he'll talk about stuff that he likes but Normally, it just ends up with him trying to correct you or him trying to make an argument or like it's not really conversational, which, you know, that's part of autism is it pretty much in a bad way of saying it. It, it really ha- handicaps your ability to kind of act like a human. You know what I mean? Because the because it handicaps the part that makes you a social and well, not. I mean, yeah, th- there's people that are antisocial, but still can, you know know how to be social they just don't like it right. but um like me the um but he just don't know like he'll be talking about be like yo let's talk about five nights at freddy's in sunday school you know what i mean like but even the, you know you like um you're not going to talk about uh do you like dmx i'm just trying to like you wouldn't talk about dmx in sunday school you would talk right. about dmx with your dmx liking friends you know what i mean like you would know who to talk about certain things with because you know who ain't going to give a shit, you know? <clears throat> but, um, so it, it's kind of like that. And like, there's like video games he likes, but he's, he's not really into it. Like say me or you're into it. He's more into the idea of it. And he likes to imitate, like, instead of playing the Batman game and beating it, he'd rather just be Batman and then he'll run around and like want to imitate the moves that he saw in the game, you know, you know, type thing. So yeah. it's, I don't know. It's, he has a different way of liking it. And right now his big thing is Michael Jackson. Like he's like, he like smooth. How many, how many times I freaking hear freaking smooth criminal, like in a daily basis. Smooth and him like smooth criminal. That is not how you say that word. I'm talking fast. Come on. No, sir. That is not, I can say criminal fast. Smooth. Now you're messing up my words. Smooth criminal. Okay. Thank you. And then like, so he'll be like doing the lean or he'll be like doing a little hat tip and just like, and, and all this stuff. And like, it's just all the time to wear, but it's just kind of an imitating thing. He, he loves dances. Like, but I'm glad he's on the, this out and he's out of freaking gun gangnam style or whatever. Mm-hmm. That's just, I'm going to tell you when you're, when you, I say this all the time, but when you're a fucking terrible parent, the Moonwalker DVD is amazing because it has all of that Michael Jackson shit and it automatically restarts itself. You don't even have to fucking do anything. That shit's amazing. Yeah, we were thinking about getting that, but, um, like, cause sometimes it's, um, he'll get fixated on a certain thing, even though it's a certain thing that he, we like. Like, when I was playing P4 back in the day, like, it's been like a year and a half now. Wow. But anyway, he got, it's not like he really cared about the story or anything. It's just, I, I guess the characters and how they looked and stuff. And he'll be like humming the songs and stuff to where like, 
even though I really liked it, like I got tired of hearing about it and tired of hearing the songs hummed and, and all this is just because, you know, you know, you, you know, the same thing repeated over and over. It's going to get on your nerves out there a while, but that, that's just how he is. And that's the, I think that's just part of what makes autism autism. It's, it's kind of a, um, you get into a safe thing and you just kind of repeat it. Yeah. But, but he's out of that, and now he's on the Michael Jackson, which, you know, after yeah. after Michael Jackson, who knows what it's going to be. <laughs> yeah. I, I, you, know what, you know what it was for us? What's that? Uh, it went from Michael Jackson everything to fucking Mary Poppins. Mary Poppins? Mary fucking Poppins. That's what happened to us. It went from Michael Jackson everything to Mary fucking Poppins. To this day, I've never seen Mary Poppins. I've never seen that movie ever. I've heard it a million times, but I have never seen Mary Poppins. I don't think I need to at this point. <laughs> so, yeah, that's what happened for us. I mean, it could be, I mean, of course, it's going to be something different for you, but yeah. But yeah, we're, we're well, I mean, we're still trying and we've, I mean, yes, we lose our patience sometimes, but we have to have like the patience of a freaking ox, you know, to like if, <laughs> you know, because everyone else that like is like, sits with him or anything it's just like how do you guys do it you you guys do it 24 7 i was like you yes we do <laughs> yeah my um my you know my nephew is also uh he's autistic also but he has an older brother that kind of steps in and mm-hmm. he's very protective of his brother and you know that type of stuff so that so the so my sister and her husband can get a little breather uh every once in a while because the brother would be like okay let's go play some video games or some shit you know like let's let's just go get out of the hair let's go handle some business let's go do something like that type of thing um uh-huh. so it's is a little bit easier when uh the older brother is there but you but yours is the older brother right so, so. yeah fun times i mean just i mean i mean just get the little ninja some weed <laughs> i mean some straight up weed not that not this bullshit that you gave him already that they think is <laughs> weed I and mean, just get him some weed just like be like hey fucking you know pack up and go somewhere where it's legal and be like get the little nigga some weed i'm ninja <laughs> get the little ninja some weed. <laughs> <laughs> you forget who i am sometimes don't you <laughs> no no, nah, I mean, every, I mean, everybody, you know, depending on who you're talking about and who you're talking to, like anybody can be a nigga. Like, fuck it. <laughs> especially, especially when this is your second podcast of the day and you're kind of sleepy. Yeah. <laughs> but yeah, the video game awards, man, fucking joke. <laughs> oh my god, oh my god, I had there was a very uh, after facetious ended. We talked about it for a few minutes. And we let the video game awards have it um, just between us two. And then I realized that if I talk about the video game awards, it cannot be the normal facetious because the amount of cussing that I'm going to do on that show is not going to be good for anybody. Like, right. I mean, it's like the people who don't like me cussing a lot, like they're really going to really dislike that show because it's just a lot of cussing. It's just going to be a whole lot of fucking cussing. Like, just like, fuck this and fuck that and fuck this and fuck that. Because I don't, because the thing like about that is, um, I'm pretty sure, I mean, if there are listeners that listen to this show with their kids, I mean, I'm not judging, but, but. No, no, but no, the people, the people, awards, the people over here, know, they know better. So, so right. fuck, all, fuck all that. But, but yeah, but the video game awards is something I would actually like to, it would be great to sit down and watch the video game awards with people that aren't in the video games and see, you know, that video games are actually legitimate, you know, a legitimate art form and they're like getting awards and things and, and whatnot. And then when it's all, I mean, all the cursing and everything. And then, you know, that freaking video game that basically was just a big curse fest. The one that was like, fuck you. And like, what was that game? It was like the, by the, and and then the guy that made it was like some dude would look like look like he was uh trying to be the dude from the cure. But um I have no idea what you're talking uh, about. What are you talking about? It was like this game that like, the first words out of the character's mouth was like, Fuck you and it was like and it was something like accounting plus or something was the name of the game. They were, and you're like cutting people open and stuff. I must have missed that one. I'm I didn't I did not watch the beginning. I came in when I came in when Edith Finch won an award 
and then uh-huh. my, my stream was kind of all over the place like that the 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 trailer that they showed that was like in like egypt or some shit like that i missed like the second half of that trailer because my my uh the mixer stream just fucking froze it actually that game looks pretty cool because i i dug I dug Firewatch, but I do dig no, some games. No, I, the only thing I liked about that trailer is uh, from the from the first half that I saw that uh, that uh, the character that's that's with you has a nice ass. <laughs> but you're not too into like the straight up story games either, are you? Um, like Firewatch and stuff. I'm, I've never played Firewatch. Firewatch is a kind of game that I would play if, if I got it for free from one of the places, uh, you know, PlayStation or Xbox. Or if I got it in like a humble bundle, it's not a game that I would actually pay for, like straight up. Well, normally games like that are twenty dollars or less, so that's good. But yeah, like like there was that weird fucking game called Virginia that I really mm-hmm. wanted to play, but I'm like, I ain't buying that shit. Virginia looked pretty cool. Yeah, it it, it looks like that kind of game, you know. Mm-hmm. But, it, but then there was but, some sort of like a time mechanic and like pe- like you jumped around to different times and stuff like that but it could be like just random just like one moment you're talking to someone the next minute you're like a year earlier or some shit like that like what the fuck just happened like that type of thing because jeff keely looked like when like the fuck the oscars guy he looked like i'm trying to bit this thing legit and i get these people in here and they just it's like nobody respects Jeff Keighley. They're like, I'm going to no, come on your show. No, I, and no the say best part about the, fuck I want. the best part about the, that that whole thing it, when that guy said "fuck the Oscars," you know that Jeff Keighley's whole thing has been like the video game awards. He wants it to be the Oscars of video games. So, like <laughs> that guy saying "fuck the Oscars" was like a straight shot at Jeff Keighley. And he kept trying to rein him in, and he just couldn't. And then, like, the guy didn't even have enough time to talk about his game because he talked about everything else. I love, I love the way that he just kind of appropriated, uh, you know, like, there's a, there's a, there's a term that we say in the black community. Um, you know, I put, I just put my fist up. No one can see that. Um, but, you know, players fuck up. Like, sometimes, like, you could, you, you know, you could, you could feel like you're the man and you could do something wrong. And, he basically took the play as fuck up thing when he talked about EA. Uh, and he was just like, yeah, they all, they all fuck up. Like, it was like, wait, 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 that's play as fuck up dog. Like you can't really say that, you know, that type of thing. I enjoyed that shit. I enjoyed that. That was the best part of the fucking awards to me. Um, <laughs> and, and the, the part that I hated the most, what bothered me is we spent way too much time on like this uh, esports nonsense, and then there was just a bunch of awards that went out, and it was just Jeff Keeley standing on fucking stage, and then occasionally they would show shots of the people who won. But I'm like, why the fuck didn't you show like a clip of somebody handing them an award or something? Like, right? You, and then the, the guy who won the fucking um the 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 esports gamer of the year or whatever the fuck he didn't even speak no damn English. <laughs> yeah, because I um because I, I didn't want to sound like oh I'm just mad because the award that Persona got you know got it won't really that if it was anybody you know but it's like best RPG you would think would be bigger than you know best streamer or whatever you know what i mean fucking esports nonsense fuck that shit you know what i'm saying like for real like best score like best soundtrack was mentioned before the show even started yeah and it's just like come on man like at the very least the the oscars when the oscars do some shit like that they have that nice little montage thing and they actually show like at least at the very least a picture of the person holding the award or some shit like that like do that shit like if you want to be the oscars of video games do that shit don't just fucking have jeff Keeley standing on fucking stage reading off some winners of some shit you know or just have like a really nice mock-up of the award and like have the like it like appropriately like lettered and stuff like that and be like oh this person won that and the, you know like that shit other than jeff Keeley just standing on a fucking stage which was and, just, did you notice like when he did the best streamer or whatever thing like when he opened it you saw it but he, he opened it in a way that you saw the name before he even said it, I was like, I don't freaking like garage thing or <laughs> can you be Yeah, like how, how fucking how fucking bootleg can you be? 
Yeah, but um, but yeah, because that was that was crappy. Because I mean, yeah, if the Oscars did something like that, it, for one, it would be for something like you know, like best editor or something, which is important. But it's you know, they're not going to like bring the editor up to the stage and like you know, like. But have him, best have, RPG have and that best guy soundtrack. give a full fucking speech. And then, like, you're an internet fucking show. Why is there not an internet clip of that person in their speech? Even after the fucking show, like your your fucking your fucking internet show, you have all the fucking time you need on the goddamn internet. Why the fuck didn't you do that instead of just having Jeff Keighley stand on a fucking stage and read? See, this is why I can't record this part of this reason why I can't talk about the uh, video game awards on facetious, but. Um, but why, but like why the fuck didn't you just do that like these people and like you know like how they do with the Oscars and stuff like that and they have like after they win they go back into that back room and there's like some press and stuff like that and they stand there and they take some questions and shit and they just talk about their win and they talk about their art and all of that other shit why the fuck didn't you do any of that like the fact that you did none of that and it's just Jeff Keighley standing on a fucking stage is some fucking nonsense and it's disrespectful you want to know what else is disrespectful i get it it's a fucking nerd thing and like you know but it's a fucking award show it's supposed to be classy wear a fucking suit or a dress or a fucking pantsuit do not show up to a fucking award show in your mocap outfit (laughs) that's fucking ridiculous and i know that it was like you were doing your like nerd chic thing where where you had like your mocap outfit and then some nice shoes but no fuck that Actually wear some fucking clothes, like some real fucking clothes. Put on a put on some nice clothes and treat this shit. If you want this shit to be respectable, you need people to act like it's fucking respectable. Who was wearing a mocap outfit? The chick who won for fucking was it Hellblade? The the chick the chick who said that she had never acted before. Oh, I, she, I, she was I don't think a, I'm paying attention to that part. Yeah, yeah, she was wearing her fucking mocap outfit with the fucking spheres on it and all. Huh. Yeah. She was just in in like I think they won another award in and I can't remember if both of them had on mocap outfits, but you know, when she won the award herself for playing that character, which let's be honest, this is the first time in a long time that there was a Mass Effect game available and ain't none of them get nominated. Um, which like Mass Effect fans, we noticed that shit. Um, but like, I just, just like she showed up in a, she showed up in a mocap outfit and I'm like, nah, that's not what's hot on these streets. Like, I need you to, I need you to dress uh, at least semi classy. Like, I need you to, at, at the, at the very least, you should be business professional. Like, seriously, I, I, I don't need you to wear a fucking tux, but I need you to act like you give a shit. Like you, th- yeah. you like wearing your mocap outfit may look cool to some people, but I thought it was fucking whack. I ain't even saying like it's classless or some shit like that. Like I'm not going that far with it, but it was just fucking whack. Yeah, and and I don't want to be salty about like who won what and whatnot, but I mean it was weird that you know Horizon Zero Dawn didn't win anything, but then like Zelda won Game of the Year. It seems very like Zelda. You know I haven't played it, but it seems like how I see Zelda at this point. Zelda is like the Call of Duty of Nintendo. It's Bruh, like let me tell you, I was surprised that Zelda won after they did all of that extra shit for Mario doing the fucking montage. Uh-huh. The, the, the 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 orchestra did the little montage of all of the uh, songs from the from all of the game of the year nominees, and then like you know all of them were playing like scores, and then when Mario came, the chick came out and was like fucking dancing. All of the people in the front had on fucking Mario hats and shit. I was like, okay, I guess Mario got this, and they were like Zelda. I was like, what the fuck? If I was the people over Mario, I know it's all Nintendo, but they not all working on the same shit. If I was the people at Mario, I'd be pissed off. It's like, bitch, I don't all these goddamn hats i had we had to pay this chick to come out and sing the fucking song from the fucking donkey kong area i wish i wish a motherfucker would tell me i ain't win a goddamn award after y'all did all that extra shit i slapped the fuck out of somebody like this is some boo shit like i'll be if i was the people over mario i know it's all nintendo and it's supposed to be nintendo love it's crew love and all that shit but i don't love my crew in that moment mm-hmm. right <laughs> <laughs> but the dude that come out and was like going to do the reward and acted like he had to put his credit card in the award thing. 
that, that was, was funny. funny. That was funny. <laughs> I don't care what but I mean that's that's my um what's his name that he played Chuck. Uh-huh. In in the show Chuck. But uh is it me? Like I'm not a I'm not a body shamer, but that dude gained a bit of weight. Like I was, he seemed a little he seemed a little chunky. I don't know. <laughs> like I remember him as like young Chuck, and I guess like maybe he you know grew up a little bit, got some kids and shit at home. Like maybe the you know he's not looking forward to playing Chuck and uh, being Chuck right now. He just wants to like some quiet time with uh, for you know let the kids go to bed and get him a beer and watch the game or something. But it looks like that's all he's been doing since <laughs> since Chuck. <laughs> give, give me a beer. Let me watch the game. Fucking Ravens are on. <laughs> like, I, I mean, I don't know where he's from, but like, where, wherever the fucking team is from, where he's from, like, I'm gonna watch the Rams. You know, out it's L.A. or or the Chargers or fucking Oakland to some extent. Um, yeah, because because cause, yeah, it was really long. Like, I mean, it's like three hours long as is, and then they still had the rush through awards but they don't really have that many awards they just did all this extra shit which could have been in a pre-show or okay. an after show okay and um i said this in the chat and i said this to blue but uh that phoenix group is is there I mean, there is not much on earth that would actually make me miss Fallout Boy, but I miss Fallout Boy in that moment because you know, like Fallout Boy is like the video game awards type shit. You know what I'm saying? Like I missed Fallout Boy. Like seriously, I was like, "What the fuck is this shit?" It's not even in English. Like I felt like I felt like typical fucking like I I felt a little bit rednecky. Like what the fuck is this fucking foreign shit? I don't even know what fucking language they're speaking. Like like that type of shit. Like I was fucking heated. Like. What what, what the fuck is this? It's not American. And like the song wasn't even that good. Like they were like super into it. The only cool thing about it was dudes clear drums. I love those drums. But other than that, like I didn't give a shit about the fucking Phoenix thing. And it was like, oh, we got a performance from Phoenix. And I'm like, who the fuck is Phoenix? And like we said that in the chat. Like, like who the fuck is that? Like, I don't know. I'm glad you said it first. Like that type of shit happened like in the chat because we were like, who the fuck is that? And like no one knew who the fuck Phoenix was. Did you know who Phoenix was? Of course not. No. And I mean, I knew it's weird. Cause they even got like freaking Jason Schwartzman to announce it. I was like, I'm, I'm, never, I'm never really like that dude because he, he pays, he plays pretty much a douchebag in everything. Uh huh. So it's like, you know, like if you play a douchebag in everything, I kind of associate you with being a douchebag. Well, he, he seemed like the, um, you know, for a while, he was just playing like the the quiet artsy guy until I saw him in Spun, and now I can't look at him the same way after Spun. <laughs> like, I guess I guess I don't know what that is, and that's that's a good thing. It it's a movie about meth heads. Uh-huh. It's um well, there's a particular scene where he 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 chains a stripper to a bed, and then um <laughs> and they like you know, do it in different ways and whatnot. And then, um, he has to like go out somewhere and, and he's like, Oh, I'll be right back. And he had like this loud ass music playing. And when he slammed the door, the CD started skipping and it never stopped. And he just like forgot about her and left her there for like four days, just with blasting chain to a bed. Wow. <laughs> so, wow. He was like a total, like just screw up in that movie. But everybody was a screw up in that movie. That movie is messed up. It's kind of like the a more comedic Requiem for a Dream, I guess. <laughs> Never seen that shit either. That's that's Requiem for a Dream sounds like some white people shit. Requiem for a Dream is a movie about heroin, but it's the movie if someone's like, I think I might want to do heroin, show them that movie, and then they're like, Nah, I'm good. <laughs> that that that's that's a one and done type movie. It's it's pretty fucked up. It's it's not for the faint of heart, but it is, you know, you won't want to do heroin after that shit. <laughs> yeah, I'm, I'm with you. It's kind of like how um, how, you know, like a lot of us um, and black people, we realize that crack is not the way to go after we watch New Jack City and um, Jungle Fever. Mm-hmm. Like maybe we don't want to do crack, especially when um, 
when uh, what you call it? <laughs> it was uh, it was when uh, Sam Jackson and uh, Sam Jackson was uh, going back and forth with his mama trying to get some money so he could buy some more crack and she was like well what about the TV and he said mama I smoked the TV it's like you know what I don't want to do crack <laughs> he said that shit he was so serious he's like mama I smoked the TV like he was real serious about that that was like the pro- that was like the pre I'm tired of these motherfucking snakes on this motherfucking plane like that mama I smoked the TV was like in the same type of voice uh huh um so yeah that happened also um Halle I think wasn't that Halle Berry's first movie and she played uh his uh crackhead lover I don't know I seen it you ever seen Jungle Fever uh huh okay I guess never mind. Well, we'll have to, um, maybe we can do some net. Well, I don't know if it's on Netflix, but we should, um, you know, I rec instead of having, well, I mean, people can still recommend stuff. It'd be kind of cool. Like I recommend a movie and then you recommend a movie so we can kind of be on the same page on movies. That'd be kind of cool. Now, you know what? There was, there was an idea that I had, right? There was an idea that I had that I was going to do with my girlfriend. And I think it still applies. And I could possibly, we could possibly do the same idea. I don't really want to say it here, but okay, it's possible we can do the same thing. You, know what I'm saying? you say an idea that your ex-wife had. You're like, it's possible that we do the same thing. No, 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 no. It's I'm like idea, the idea for a show that I have with my girlfriend, not my ex-wife. Okay. <laughs> well, was, still, it, an it idea was, you had it, with your girlfriend, was, you want to do it with me instead. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, not not that kind of not that kind of idea, but it was base. It was well, okay. Fuck it. That, now I gotta explain it because I don't want to seem like a fucking jerk. But um, basically, uh, because we are two completely separate types of people, um, uh-huh. basically what we do is we pick something like a movie or a TV show or uh, a, an album or something like that, and we swap. You give me something I've never heard before. I give you something you've never heard before. And then we come back to the show and talk about our experience with this thing that you care about. And I clearly don't. Mm -hmm. It has to be something somewhat consumable, not like something. It has it has to be something that you can get like on like uh, mostly like it has to be something that you can get on like a streaming service at least. Because it has to be something that if anybody else wants to get in on this, they have access to it too. Access to it too. So it has to be like a Netflix or Amazon show. Um, You know, Hulu Hulu is really cheap. It's like five ninety nine for like a year. Um, And then, um, but it has to be like if it's like a TV show or a movie that's on one of those, or like uh, an, an album that I can get from like Spotify or Google something like that not some shit that's on title because you know fuck that um that's something so i like can't that. request any jay-z <laughs> um no actually well you technically you can because i have it all um but you can you i mean it has to be something that everyone else can can have access to right well most things are on spotify like if it's an album mo- pretty much everything is on spotify that i care about so I mean, there's some things that's not, but but uh, but I'm not on Spotify, so I mean, well, I what's have, on Spotify? Free, is probably on Google. I have the free Spotify shit, so it'd be all right. Well, if you have a PlayStation, you pretty much have premium Spotify because you can go to an album and listen to it in order. You would just have ads, so no, that's something. Uh, if you have a PlayStation. That's why I pay for Google. Uh, that's why I pay for YouTube Red, and I get my Google Music with no ads for free. <clears throat> but yeah, a lot of people probably don't know that about Spotify with their PlayStation that, you know, in the phone, it's going to play it, you know, randomized, but on the PlayStation, it's pretty much not randomized. So it's kind of like the premium version, except you still have ads, but so. Okay. Um, Oh, did you see the ready player one trailer? I saw a screenshot of it that had tracer from overwatch, but I haven't (laughs) seen that trailer. I mean, I saw the original one, but I didn't see the new one. Okay. Um, that was cool. Um, you know, like other, the, I'm, I really, I'm really, okay. Here's my only problem with the Ready Player One trailer. Um, is like when you're a book reader or, a, you know, you listen to audiobooks and such, like I did for Ready Player One, like it sucks when like the person that they cast 
in the some of these roles look absolutely nothing like what you pictured right like based, yeah. based off of the way that they were described um that's probably why a lot of people got pissed off at the hunger games because they missed that part where rue is black um so <laughs> so yeah i uh so like so, uh, almost all of the characters don't look anything like i pictured them which mm-hmm. that's the only part that sucks but that's me personally um and like i can't wait um have you ever listened have you listened to the audiobook before no I, I had it on my queue, but I just never. Okay, you should do that. I I really like it a lot, especially if you care about if you can if you care about eighties pop culture. The book is for you. Um, but it seems like they kind of gloss over music. It's mostly just movies and shit like that, and like nerd shit. And it seems like a lot of nerd shit. It's like for some reason nerds don't give a shit about music, which is weird, but. I don't know. <laughs> yeah, but but like I said, in the trailer, there's a Van Halen song and all of this other stuff because it is. I mean, it it has it has all of that stuff in the book. The book was written in like twenty. It came out in like twenty eleven or something. So it mm-hmm. has like uh, references to like Halo and some Star Wars stuff and all of that other stuff. But uh-huh. um, but the but of course they had to update it a little bit and they have not now they have stuff like tracer and stuff in the in the trailer and then of course like warner brothers is over everything so there's gonna be a lot of dc characters like you've already seen a, a decent amount of dc characters in the trailers like you've seen the joker and harley quinn you've seen um deathstroke and you know some some of the other um Warner Brothers characters, but you've seen some stuff that's not Warner Brothers, like the DeLorean and all that other stuff. But the DeLorean is, a, you know, a part of everything, and um, some of these, some some anime stuff and all of this other stuff. Like it's all like the the book is filled with pop culture references, and they absolutely can't get the license to all of that stuff because it would be fucking ridiculous uh, to pay for all of that. But um, but. That's that's probably why the book is going to end up being better. But I think the movie is a good way to get people in um, visually because that's how I got into Harry Potter, and I really love Harry Potter. I didn't know that about you. I love Harry Potter. I fucking love. I absolutely fucking love Harry Potter. That's probably the nerdiest thing that I've heard you say ever, Bruh, I used to listen to. I used to listen to. Uh, what's the? What's the? I used to listen to Harry Potter podcasts. Um, like I used to, I used to read along, I used to read along with the audio books. Like, mm-hmm. I'm, uh, yeah, I love, I fucking love Harry Potter. I don't give a fuck. Like that's, that's my jam. I don't give a shit. Yeah. I never got too into Harry Potter, but I mean, I don't, I mean, I don't hate it because I just don't know much about it. Yeah. I, other I than- mean, of course I like the books better. Because uh-huh. the books have um, much more time and space to explain everything. Um, right. Some of the, some of the movies they skip like huge chunks of the book, especially like Goblet of Fire. Goblet of Fire is a huge, thick fucking book, and they just skip like the first almost quarter of that book in the movie. They just skip all of that shit. I mean, I said this before, but I still think that books go but. Like, how better would it be if instead of doing movies, they just started out as Harry Potter was like a TV show and each book was a season? I mean, and they got to, like, actually spend that 20 or 30 hours for the book. You know what I mean? Yeah, but then you end up with True Blood and, like, you realize that you you can't do it the same way um, because I was into True Blood for a little bit and then I listened to all of the books on audiobook and... They, the difference between the books and the movies is the books are completely from Sookie's perspective. So like what the, who these characters are, are a complete, just, it's just, it's just what she thinks of them is not what, it's not who they are. So when they make the TV show, they have to make the TV show, um, have like real fucking characters of these people, not just what she thinks of them. And right. That, and, and so that, so in that, in that it changes everything and then like of course like you get into the tv show and you realize that the guy playing lafayette is fucking awesome so you can't kill him off like you did in the books spoiler alert but fuck it like who's gonna go back and read the fucking true blood books right now um especially because the show took a fucking nosedive um but um but yeah so but like 
and then like all of these characters like Tara and all these other people. Did you ever watch any True Blood? Uh, I haven't really seen any of the whole HBO stuff, which I wanted to. It's just I never had HBO, so and I, I would have to like buy the Blu-rays or the DVDs. And, no, um, Amazon Prime. Amazon Prime has all of the old HBO stuff. Amazon Prime has has a deal with HBO that um, they 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 can have all of that uh, HBO stuff that's at least five years old. I think. Okay. Except for like, except for like Game of Thrones or some shit like that. Like, I don't, I don't think Game of Thrones is on it, but like True Blood and stuff like that. Like most of the seasons of True Blood. Last time I looked at True Blood, um, it had most of the seasons there. It didn't have the most, the most, the the more recent seasons. But I think the last thing I watched off HBO is Oz, which we had, um, we had the VHS. I loved Oz, but I didn't like seeing all of these dudes' penises. And then, like, every time I see them playing something else, I'm like, dude, I see your dick. I've seen your dick before. Um, like, like one of the guys plays in the fucking, um, plays an arrow right now. It took me a long time to see J.D. Simmons as someone other than the white supremacist neo Nazi guy. Schillinger. But, um, and, um, which, um, you know it you know it took me a long time to see um uh, the the guy who was the undercover cop when he when I was seeing him in other stuff like uh fringe and and now you know he plays he does a voice in uh destiny um mm. he's like the the crackhead undercover cop like he's always gonna be that crackhead undercover cop to me yeah and actually I heard that I haven't seen the seasons after season one. So, um, but I heard that the guy from Biohazard plays a neo-Nazi in Oz. Biohazard? They're like, um, they were a hardcore band in the nineties. Well, I'm, 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 I'm prob- I probably know who you talk. I probably know who you're talking about. It's kind of hip hop and hardcore, not like, like Limp Bizkit or anything like that. It's more like hardcore punk with, which I mean, if you just most hardcore kind of has kind of a hip hop flavor to it anyway. But um, they they were more in that direction. But he's like a big, huge, built dude with tattoos. If I, prob- that- I probably know him if I if I know which guy you're talking about. Like I would I would definitely know who you're talking about. Right. Because I watched I watched the whole thing twice. Cool. I love that show. It's minus all of the penis. Oh, speaking of hardcore, I, I really I re listened to and um, there's a band called Ice Pick. It's kind of like a side project of Hatebreed and um. The song is um, real, recognizes real, and it has iced tea in it, and it's just <laughs> it's it's so like brutal and like it almost makes I don't know it's like it's just the most in your face thing ever. But in the so it kind of like you almost kind of can't take it seriously, but you kind of do in a way that we're like I don't know it's just so like real, recognizes real type thing. You're like mm-hmm. this really in your face but i know but yeah. i know who you're talking about i found him the guy the guy that's like super tatted up and all that other stuff wears a bandana uh-huh yeah wow he was he was he was married to tara patrick you know who tara patrick is right tara patrick a porn she's star. a porn star porn star tara patrick uh, i'm a good christian boy i don't know stuff like that okay never mind <laughs> but apparently apparently they used to be married but i, I know who you're talking about I know, I, know, um, I know who you're talking about now. His his name his his name is Evan Seinfeld though. <laughs> but he plays he play for he plays jazz jazz Hoyt in the show. I, right. I know I know who you're talking about. Yeah, we're kind of dwindling on now. So okay, um, I will say this: I listened to something new uh, a couple days ago, and I regret most of it. I was just looking for something. I was like, I was going to the store. I was on my lunch break. Um, on Saturday, I was on my lunch break and I decided to walk over because I needed a hat, um, because, you know, it was snowing and shit and I can't find my Scarfinger hat, uh, because, you know, my girl got a Scarfinger hat for me made. It's like stitched and it's like, it's just a scully and it has a Scarfinger in blue across the front. I couldn't find it. So I went and bought me a hat and I had to walk across the street and I was like, well, I'm already listening to all of the podcasts that I could listen to that I want to listen to right now. Um, Let me just pick something random to listen to on Google Play. And I ended up listening to the Drake album. Which one? More Life. Oh. It has yeah, it, never... it has some it has some songs. 
it has some songs, but mostly the songs that I really like are songs that I already heard like marching bands and stuff play. So I already had a pretty good concept of the songs. I mm-hmm. like, like, like I've always liked Drake. I like Drake. His charisma will always be light years ahead of a lot of his peers. And uh, when Drake is on his rapping shit, like when he wants to be like a rapper rapper, he's great. But when he gets into all this emo shit, I'm not about that life. So, but Drake, Drake the rapper is dope. Drake the emo millennial, not so much. Right. But it has, it has some, and like the interludes were like these, I guess, I don't know if it's the same dude or it's different dudes, but they're like, they're, there's a lot of like very, very much of a uh, British hip hop influence, not necessarily grime because they're not like rapping fast and stuff like that. But there's a lot of that uh, British and in like, you know, because British has a very strong uh, Caribbean influence also, uh, especially their 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 hip hop. Uh, has a very strong Caribbean influence. There's a lot of that on this album. Um, and there's some there's some cool songs, uh, and then it gets to a point to where it's, I never want to hear that ever again. Like it's some there's some songs is just like oh I will, like if that ever comes on I will break my fucking phone. Like does. <laughs> Is that bad? Uh, like, oh my god, burn this fucking thing! Like, kill it with fire. When it comes to the album, but there's some there's some good songs. But like I say, a lot of that stuff I already knew from marching bands, so I already had like a little bit of a. I already I had a little bit of familiarity with it. Right. All right, so um, let's go ahead and wrap this up. Um, anything else you want to say before we get out of here? I guess I can mention one album, but that's just in passing. I uh. I mean, it's not anything new, but I was re-listening to some Kylesa. I'm pretty sure you never heard of them, but they. Uh, of course not. But yeah, I I really dig that band, and it's been a while since I listened to them. And I listened to my favorite album by then called called Static Tensions, and they're kind of a sludge metal band, but they're like kind of psychedelic in a way. And um, they have two drummers, and it's really cool. And, and it's not like where if you just listen to them you're like wow that that drummer has like a really unique style you're not going to think that two drummers unless you someone tells you and then you're like oh that's how they're doing all that and then so it's not like real gimmicky you know it's kind of like it's kind of like dragon force when you when you listen to dragon force and then uh you play it on guitar hero and you have to do that long fucking solo it's just like how the fuck can anybody do this and then you watch the video and you realize it's two of them Mm -hmm. but yeah but yeah, they're really good, and they have two vocalists as well. But they both they both play guitar, so it's technically not just two vocalists on stage. So, that, but there there is two different vocals going on in different parts, which you can definitely tell that because one's a guy, one's a girl. But um, but they're so good because it's just like their song structures and everything is just it's just great, and 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 the two drummer thing it just works so well in that that style. But yeah, Kylesa is. Is is the is the shiznit? Oh, um, I don't think and um, I'm looking forward to like uh, I'm looking forward to uh, trying to um, expand my little profile. Um, I'm really I really want to do some stuff as far as designing a a, a a real YouTube page and not just like hey go to my page and just there's just fucking videos there. I really want to do like some video work and um. All kinds of stuff, and hopefully, I mean, I, I kind of get into my, I, I kind of get in my own way when it comes to the podcast because you know, there's a lot of times I don't really want to fucking do it. Mm-hmm. Like, it's not that I don't want to do the podcast. What really happens is like I don't want to do the rest of the stuff. Like, I want to be like facetious or d- the dream team, where mm-hmm. I just show up to fucking talk and I do nothing else. Right. But like I, you know, around here I have to do everything because you don't have a PC, so I can't even get any help on that. Um, and then and then like I have to edit the show, I have to put the show out, and then I have to go to fucking Gremlin. The only time I go to Gremlin is to promote shows. Um, but go to Gremlin to put the shows out, like that type of shit, over and fucking over again. It's like, uh, um, I I really missed uh I really really missed being married to someone that wanted to do all of that shit herself. Um, that was great um <laughs> but um 
but yeah, but I'm I'm looking forward to trying to raise the profile a little bit. I wanted I thought about doing a Patreon, but then Patreon just changed their shit and are trying to are really trying to fuck people over. So I don't know if I'm gonna have to try to do something different. Right, and um, that kind of reminds me. I, I actually made a new Twitch because I I just wanted to make sure that there wasn't anything else like. I'm sure there's other things like it, but I just made a Twitch called Best Video Game Soundtracks. And I'm just going to, like, stream video game soundtracks. Okay. And just, um, and even shit that I don't like that I know is kind of popular to see if, I you just want to see if it get popular. You want to know what's the most underrated video game soundtrack? What's that? And it's my, it's my, it's my go-to when I have, um, writer's block. That's they right. Say you, you should, no, they say you should listen to music when you, uh, listen to music without words when you have writer's block. Um, so when I was actually writing and like doing show notes and stuff like that, trying to come up with ideas, I don't fucking do that shit anymore. I just get on a riff. Um, but the Heavy Rain soundtrack. Huh. And to be honest, Heavy Rain really, really set the show off. Like if the like the very, very early days, I was doing a lot of shows trying to get it done by myself with like Jaybird and a f- few other people. Um, but like um my ex-wife and I did a series on Heavy Rain, and to this day, if I go to that old page, the Heavy Rain episodes are still being downloaded. Mm-hmm. Like, still, to this day, for some fucking reason, people still give a shit about those Heavy Rain episodes. <sighs> but yeah, the Heavy Rain soundtrack is 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 really good. I really enjoyed it quite a bit. Yeah, maybe people write down some of their favorite soundtracks, and then once I get a computer, you know, can be kind of a kind of a thing, you know. Maybe we can do it. Maybe that can be an extra life thing to where we actually like do a oh, what stream the, what, together. Whatever happened? Whatever happened to the extra life thing you wanted to do? I, I want to do it, but I don't know if I'm going to be have have time to do it. You know yeah. what I mean? Got baby. It's issues. um right. It, it, it's uh, but but yeah, doing the video game thing, it, it would be like having your own radio. Like normally, I would just be streaming it. But if we did it for extra life, we could be like interacting a lot more and like actually treating it almost like a radio show, you know. And then it, it would be a stream that you don't really have to do much, so you can just put on like a block of music, and then we just like sit and vape and shit. Oh, <laughs> you let, know me tell, I mean? let me tell you what. Uh, a, a few friends and I had this idea a long fucking time ago, and we never actually did it. We were going to do, and we were going to write skits and get everything straight. What we planned on doing was a fake radio station for Saints Row. Huh. And we thought that was like a great fucking, um, or like a great fucking idea because like a few of us were like super into Saints Row. And we, so, so we were going to do that. We were going to do a fake, uh, Saints Row radio station. That might actually be fun, minus the skits and stuff. Right. Yeah, because I thought it was because I, I did that a little bit to where I would come up with playlists and stuff. And I mean, my whole life, I thought it'd be cool to like do the whole radio station thing, you know, if it actually paid well. But um, but the but the thing is, like, I, I would go on Twitch and I just put my my iTunes playlist and I would like talk and stuff and. And then I got banned from Twitch for that for like a day. And then I did it on YouTube and then I got copyright infringement stuff, which, which is understandable because it's copyrighted music, but I was, I wasn't doing really popular stuff. To me, it was more like just promoting the music because I was like actually encouraging people to check this shit out. You know what I mean? So, but they don't know. But then on Twitch, I thought it'd be better to do it, do the video game soundtrack thing because for one, it's not going to get DMs. It's not going to get muted because of, or it's not going to do the ad thing like YouTube will. And Twitch is more lenient if it's video game related, and video game soundtrack would be related. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. So, so it would be video game centric, but still within the music. And, and and I dig I dig video game soundtracks. I just don't really dig like songs about video games. You know what I mean? Right. But um, I mean there, there's some I do, but. On, on the most part, I'm not going to go and listen to, you know, a song about Halo or a song about, you know, whatever. Just because it's just, I'd rather listen to people sing about stuff that they that's from personal experience or or 
or whatnot rather than singing about something from a video game. It just seems it seems gimmick like, like if someone Chase, makes a song about Chase, you're rambling. But, you're rambling. I know, but if someone makes a you're, song you're about saying this you're saying the same thing. You just said the same thing three times in a row. Just in different words. You just said the same thing three times. <laughs> Like we get it's it. almost midnight. We want, we, I mean, we get it. You want to see people sing songs not about fucking video games. You want to see people sing songs about what's going on in their lives and shit. We got it. Yeah. You don't have to say it a fourth time. Cool. Okay. Cool. All right. All right, cool. we're, we're getting the fuck out of here. Uh, for the homie Chase, I'm Scarfinger. This is Scarcasm Live. I think we had a good talk. I think it was a good talk. And it wasn't like it wasn't like a typical show uh, where we just talk about the stuff that we've watched and played and stuff like that. We actually just talked about shit. Um, we didn't even talk about what we watched, which I'm watching all the same shit, so it doesn't matter. Um, so we're out of here. Peace out to the Warriors. Later. I like that shit, yeah, boy. I'm telling you, woke. I'm telling. All right, I ain't gonna talk.